Hey guys, so this is the fourth part of the video where we'll be doing the actual failover. In the last video, we did the test failover and it was successful. So now if we go back to the documentation, we are in the fourth one where we are just following this step to run a failover. So the procedure is to go to recovery plans and then click failover. Uh, in our case, we have recovery plan, uh, but it's just one VM. So either we can do it from recovery plan or we can just go to the replicated items and do the failover. So in the failover, uh, failover direction, uh, okay. Uh, that will be VMware to Azure and then choose the latest recovery point. And then we can uh, select shut down the machine before winning the failover because this is the actual failover. We need not want to be uh, in a situation where the production is also running and the DR is also running, right? So that's the reason why we need to make sure the source is shut down. And then uh, failover progress, we can see in the jobs page after the failover, sign into the VM and validate like how we did for the other one, the test with the word. Uh, if you want to switch to different recovery point, you can use this option. If not, we can just come in the failover. So let's try it on the portal. So we are here in the replicated item. Everything shows healthy. So either we can go and do here or go to the recovery plan and then do the failover. So I'll do it from here. I just click on failover. The failover direction is VMware to Azure and shut down machine before beginning the failover. Now, in this case, my on-prem is up and running. So there is no challenge because uh, when I do this, automatically it will go and shut down. Uh, in some case, right, uh, when there is an actual DR, even though this option is checked, but the source machine is not available because it, there is a DR and then everything is uh, powered down automatically. So it's okay. So click on okay. Since we already provided all the networking detail for actual failover, uh, so everything is in place. Now, once you click on this okay, and we are choosing the recovery point as uh, the latest processed one. So should be good. For the test failover, it takes about eight to 10 minutes per VM. Uh, for the, uh, let's see, for the actual failover, how long it takes. So it is shut down the virtual machine. Now, if I go to my VMware infrastructure, I should see the source machine is shut down. Uh, let me see, this is my test machine. Yes, as you can see, the status of this machine is powered off now. So the shutdown is triggered. So let's go back to the portal. Now it is starting the failover. So this again uh, will take the same time like the previous one, the test failover, about eight to 10 minutes. If we go to the virtual machines, I think there should be a virtual machine which is getting created for this shortly. So we can we do it some time. Okay, the failover was initiated. And we are here. So it is pretty quick. Uh, it took less than one minute to do the pre check and shut down the source machine. So if we go back to virtual machines, let's see if something is happening. Okay. Let me just give it time. Okay. Um, so what is the documentation says? Uh, we have to wait. Okay, this is the place where we are now. And then we sign in and validate, which we can do. And after signing in and validating, if we are not happy with the current recovery point, Maybe if we want to go one step behind, we can do that option, change recovery point. So when you're ready with the actual recovery point, which you intend to choose, then we can go and click comment option, uh, sorry, the commit option. This will delete all the recovery points and there won't be any option to change the recovery point because we are making sure this is the final instance of TR which has to be run. OK, 
Okay, so I'll give it some time. I'll pause the video while it's happening uh, because I just see right now it is still creating the virtual machine. You can see here ASR 10. Uh, this is a temporary name given. And once the machine is up and running, uh, it should get the actual name which we gave during the replication uh, option. So let me pause and get back once this is done. Okay, uh, as we can see, it completed like around eight minutes it took for overall activity. Um, so now we should have the VM. Okay, so we have the VM up and running. This is the actual failover. So first thing, uh, as for the article, if we go through, uh, we need to validate the VM. So if you see the IP range is different than the previous one because this one is the actual failover IP which I specified. Now let's uh, do some like settings like you know I need to associate the public IP to do the test. So I go to the public IP, the one which I created. I will associate this with virtual machine network interface and the machine which just got created so this is one and then i also need to go to the network security groups which has the firewall rules which is here and i will go to network interfaces and associate this with the vm these steps okay I'm not able to associate let's see why the photo virtual machine and then if I go here okay, for the options to load okay I do see the public IP is done and then if I go to the networking we'll also see the network oh okay so the previous rule here that was meant for the test failover over VM, uh, but in our case, the interface is different now. This is the private IP, so I'll just change this. Also for this. Okay. So now to validate if our website is working with the actual failover, I'll just copy the public IP. I go to this, this, this public IP and do an enter. Yes, it works. And to double check, I can also take an RDP to this public IP. Sorry. Okay, so we are into the machine and then on the edge. So all those things. I will host and then my website should be up. Okay. So the website is up. So we did 
two types of testing. One is we RDP into the machine, which is working. And then we also use the public IP to check and that is also working. Right, so now the next step is to commit the failover. So if I go back to the recovery services vault and then the site recovery. So we are happy with the testing. The failover is completed, everything looks good. Then we go here and then we do a commit. And we can also do a change recovery point if we are not uh, you know, happy with the current recovery. But in our case, we just go to commit. So I show you want to commit the version. Once you commit, you cannot change the recovery point of the version. It should be okay. Click okay. So this will basically delete all the other recovery points. We, we won't have anything else apart from the current state of the VM running in the TR. So the commit is successful. So now this completes the part four of the video. We did this and we did the commit. In the next video, we will do a fail back. So which means after the DR, now the on-premise back up and running. How do we do a fail back? So that's what we're going to do it in the next video. Thank you, guys.